What's going on guys? This is the 2016 C7 Corvette. In today's video, we're going to talk about the features and go for a bit of a drive and see if it's one of the best used car values on the market today. I've got a 2015 Mustang GT Performance Pack manual transmission car and I was considering getting another vehicle to drive to replace that with so I'm tired of driving the manual now I got this car for $100 on Turo and last week I test drove 2019 Mustang GT with a 10-speed automatic convertible I figured why not if I'm gonna spend 35 to 40 grand why not check out the C7 because values have gone down pretty low you can actually get up a high mileage i saw a high mileage c7 today on the forums for twenty seven thousand dollars it had one hundred and twenty five thousand miles on it so is this something that you would consider a great value also that you can daily drive all right guys here we are setting off in the 2016 c7 corvette this has the eight speed automatic now I believe that has the factory. This does not have the MPP exhaust. I haven't heard it change modes, but it's not quiet as you could hear in the cold start video. So let's first just talk about the experience from the driver's perspective as soon as you jump in the car. Now, it has the little the button on the inside of the door handle, it's electronically controlled. It's not a handle, it's a push button. It's right inside the door. And that's how you get inside the car. Now, when you step into the vehicle, I daily drive my Mustang, okay? Not a big deal. Easy car to daily. I didn't realize how easy the car was to drive daily compared to something like the C7. When you jump into the C7, you don't you don't jump into it. You drop down into it. You slide into it. It is very low to the ground. The seat position is inside the car like a cockpit. It's the closest thing that you can get to driving. It feels like you're in a race car or a go-kart. The way that this seat sits, I don't know if you can see my leg. My leg is pretty much up against this most of the time. My other leg is pretty much against the door most of the time. The seats are, are hugging my thighs and my butt and my back. I'm in a deep bucket seat and I'm surrounded by things, okay? If you don't like that feeling, I mean, you just slide down into this vehicle. The first thing I thought I was wearing a big bubble jacket is I don't like this at all. This is too tight. I don't want, I'm not comfortable. I feel, I feel squished inside of this car, right? So I, now, I've, now that I've got that out of the way, I'm probably going to repeat that a few times because that's the only thing about this car. If you're going to be daily driving this car, it is a tight squeeze. I'm five foot 11 ish, maybe six foot on a good day, 230 pounds. And I've, um, bulky. I've been doing bodybuilding for a long time, so I'm not small. Um, but you know, if you're a skinny dude, this car will probably fit you a bit better, but that's the biggest thing is how tight the vehicle is inside. I would recommend that you go, go sit in one. Now I've heard that the C6 is space, has more space inside than the C7. That's the only thing. This car is a sports car, guys. This is the steering response. It has got a quick steering ratio. As soon as you turn the wheel, you know that this car is going to go exactly where you want it to go. It is the, it's, it's almost, it's completely different vehicle than a, than a Mustang. And the reason I keep comparing it is that's the one that I've been driving for the past five and a half years. And I've driven, you know, over, I've owned over 40 or 50 cars, something like that. So I've, I've had my share of inside of different vehicles. What do you want to know? So the driving experience, this steering wheel is small. It has a flat bottom. It, 
this is like a race car guys this feels like you're in a race car it is amazing um i would not want to daily drive this car like i said getting in and out of the low seating position and feeling like you're stuck inside of a cockpit is not my favorite feeling um unless it's just for the weekend just for fun right and that's what we're doing today so where this car really shines is definitely on the back roads definitely on these winding canyon roads this is where this car is at at, at home now i've just got it in touring mode you can select here touring you can see on the dash it'll go to sport and then it'll go to track mode if you want and you can press the traction control button and it will turn off the traction control and i'll stomp on it a little bit on the way back up but for now we're just going to put it in tour mode and let it cruise and now it's actually running on four cylinders and the estimated miles per gallon is like 99 because we're going downhill but on flat road you can see the estimated uh or the inst instant fuel economy somewhere like in the 40s when it's when it's running on on the cylinder deactivation and touring mode it cuts off four of the cylinders and it just cruises like a four cylinder so one of the big pros is that this corvette is lightweight and it gets great fuel economy because of the aero and the lightweight and the cylinder deactivation with this eight speed automatic transmission it's going to get it's going to get one of the better fuel economies that you can get now this car has got fifty five thousand miles and i think it's been rented i think it has something like 150 or 200 reviews on turo if 50 percent of the people leave a review on turo that means that it's got 400 rents under the on this vehicle it's been rented 400 times who knows how many times so this is a highly used c7 this is probably similar to like a hundred thousand mile from a single owner that took decent care of it. I mean, this has just got a lot of abuse, a lot of wear and tear. I don't know if it's been abused, but it's got a lot of wear and tear on the basic interior pieces. You can hear something in the back going off, rattling a little bit. It sounds like it's scraping, but I know it's not. Just the little touch points are, you know, the steering wheel's shiny because it's worn down. Uh, how does it drive? This chassis is extremely rigid, like, if you compare it to an S550 Mustang chassis, they're just night and day different. This car was built as a sports car and it's hard to describe, but you know, when I was looking at the vehicle, I was like, this car looks like it's going to be, I, when I got in the car to drive it, it pretty much drove the way I'd expected it to be, like a straight up sports car. But and what I mean by that is rigid chassis and torquey, but this car has a lot more torque than I expected it to be. And it's the chassis is way more rigid and direct. It changes direction through turns. I, I didn't understand, I didn't, I didn't know. I couldn't imagine, let's say, I could not imagine how well this car feels in the corners. It takes corners with such ease and it gives you lots of confidence when you're going through the turns. So, we're just going to go up sunset here take a quick little spin and i'll put it into sport mode and kind of let you guys see what i'm talking about i'll go ahead and go manual and i want to show you this torque shove i'm just going to hit it through first here if it'll stay down in first Now something back there, it got loose a little bit in first and then it hit second really good. Something sounds like it's rubbing even though this is factory suspension and wheels and tires. So there we go. That's all I'm gonna do for right now. So this car is extremely fast, guys. I thought that it was gonna be fast, but this is almost, I know it's just a C7. It's just a stock C7, I know. But man, is it fast. The torque shove is so strong. I couldn't imagine a Z06. The torque shove around 3,000 to 5,000 
just there's no way an S550 from a roll there's there's no comparison as far as torque initial initial torque when you jab the throttle is really strong the only way is if you supercharge your s550 that's the only way you're going to be able to to have that feeling of initial torque there's no way it tuned unless you're on e85 and maybe you're at 4500 rpms with a 10 speed automatic it'll have that kind of responsiveness probably but that's a 480 wheel horsepower vehicle this just has tons of torque I mean, that was second just jab it and you can feel the rear tires breaking loose so how does it drive it's quiet it gets good gas mileage it looks really good i'm getting a lot of attention everywhere i go i can tell you know people are pretty much looking it's a red corvette when i was checking it out the girl next to me was saying oh you have a nice day and all this and that and you know nobody says that to me in the mustang i'm just saying it gets a lot of attention all the girls want to talk to you if you're in this car it's kind of true so look at the end of the day i'm not going to get this over the s550 mustang i would like to have a cruiser and this is this is a good cruiser but this is like a good sunday morning cruiser this is not a i'm just going to hop in the car and go to the market and then go over here and run errands and because of the nature of my business i'll make three or four or five stops during the day and this is not the car you want to be in if you're doing that it looks better it's faster it's a sports car it's more of a sports car than the mustang but as far as just just jumping in and out and getting in and out of the vehicle this is not the one you want to be dropping yourself into it's a just it's just a little bit too tight for me and that's my only complaint is uh that i'm getting an old man and i don't want a really tight small ride i don't know i just feel like the, that the mustang is just a more all-around vehicle that gets you about nine i'd say about 80 percent of the performance for about you know half the price so the only literally the only thing that what i was going to say about this vehicle if i could summarize it is it is a serious car it's not it's not playing games it is like a serious serious car the chassis is rigid it goes where you want it to it's surprisingly extremely fast and torquey and immediate it'll do anything that you want it to do with a lot of confidence which can get you in big time trouble because it is so fast and the mustang is more playful and it's the mustang is not as confidence inspiring as the corvette the mustang feels looser the suspension is a looser obviously and that's the biggest thing that i would say is that this is a serious purpose built car sports car this is a sports car i thought that the mustang had stepped it up a lot and it has but these are just two different vehicles the mustang is fun daily driver that's a little sporty that has a big engine this has all the torque and it's in a rigid chassis that is just made for going through the twisties we'll do a little throttle here well we didn't get to the red light let's just jab it again yeah it's just fast man <clears throat> it just sits down it hunkers down and goes it's got a ton of torque so if you're thinking about a used c7 and you're in the market for a used c7 i would say just just try to rent one and see if if you're a previous corvette owner then you understand now if you're a c6 owner the interior might feel a little tight nice gt4 cayman the interior might feel a little tight and i've heard the c8 corvette interior is a little bit more roomy and spacious i'm used to driving cars with space I've got a Prius, a Toyota Sequoia four-wheel drive, and the Mustang, and all of those cars are not sports cars. This is literally the, the definition of a sports car. So 
as long as you know that's what you're getting yourself into, which I'm assuming you do, it just caught me by surprise how snug it is in here. It also caught me by surprise how torquey and fast and purpose purpose built this vehicle is. I mean, it is, an, it is enormously fast and torquey. So in summary, is it a great vehicle on the used market? Absolutely. Like I said, I saw one today for 28,000 that had like 120,000 miles on it, had the seven speed manual. And then I've seen other ones in the 30s. You can get a supercharged, a supercharged C7. I saw one uh, today on the message boards. Look at all these Porsches. Look at all these air-cooled Porsches. Porsche club, Porsche gang going to the car show in Malibu. So in summary, yeah, it's a great value on the used market. Just, just know what you're getting yourself into. I mean, this is a serious beast and it's a serious sports car. And yeah, it's, it's American and I love it. It's American V8 front engine, rear wheel drive, eight speed automatic transmission. Great car. This car is going to be more expensive to modify if you're going to compare it to like a Mustang or something. Um, and the Mustangs do a little bit better on boost on this thing. You're going to need to do heads cam plus a power adder to really keep up with a, you know, a, a built up Whipple supercharged Mustang or something like that. But like I said, they're just two different cars. One is still the Mustang. If you're going to compare the Mustang to this, the Mustang is still a muscle car. Uh, it's, it's, it's compared to, it's not a sports car. If you're going to try to compare it, they're just two different things. And at the end of the day, I have, I had more fun driving the 10 speed automatic GT convertible Mustang. And it wasn't even a performance package car. It had performance package wheels and tires, but it wasn't a performance package car. So it didn't have the, the suspension or the brakes. So my, my my take is I'm going to try to find a 10 speed auto mag ride GT convertible. I think that's the do it, do everything ultimate California car would be. You have the convertible, the 10 speed automatic, you're not penalized for that. Plus it's still a heck of a lot of fun and it's fast. The 18 ups have a little bit more power at the same, same horsepower as this Corvette. Obviously they're heavier. And then the mag ride will give you that adjustable suspension and they even make a performance uh, suspension with springs and a retune for the magna ride suspension on the pp1 which will give it a pp2 calibration basically so you can have PP2 performance if you upgrade the wheels and tires on the PP1 with the mag ride, if you do the calibration tune with the, with the springs and sway bars, and it'll still be a convertible. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I've decided this, this, is, not, this is not my jam. Um, they're awesome. It's a definitely, a, a, you know, I would need to go, I'll probably go rent a Porsche next and see if that's more my style, but it's a little too cramped in here and it's a little bit too serious for me. It's a little bit too serious. If you want serious sports car, this is it. For me, it's a bit much for my daily commute on the rough uh, city streets of LA and making multiple stops. So in summary, it's a purpose built very fast, very responsive. You feel like you're in a race car. The seat hugs your butt. The steering wheel has a very quick ratio. It points and goes and does everything you want it to. It's easy to drive. Would I want to be driving this every day? No way. This is a Sunday morning car. You can do it on long trips as long as you're not getting out of the vehicle. It's just if you're a big guy like myself, it's going to be a little bit tight in here. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.